Now, one last feature that we need to implement in our app for registration and authentication is forgot your passwords. So this is actually kind of an interesting process. We're gonna have a form for setting up a new password, but we're also going to need to send an email with a link that is unique to that user where they can have um, a token that's verified by the server so that they can then reset their password. So there's actually quite a few um, steps to do this and that's what we're gonna do uh, today. So let's go ahead and create a route here for password resets. Now we're gonna need a um, password reset route and we can send this to a password resets controller and this will be the new action. And then we're gonna have a uh, similar thing here where we're gonna have a post to password reset and that's going to go to the create and will be what sends out the email once you type it in and we find your user account. So as usual, we can go into our app controllers folder and we're gonna add a new file in here called password resets controller.rb and we'll add our class for password resets controller and this will inherit from application controller as usual. Now we're gonna have our new action and we're going to have our create and the new is gonna do nothing um, special. It's just going to render the form. So we'll go and create an app views folder called password resets. And inside of there, we'll create our new.html.erb, new.html.erb. And here we will say forgot your password and define our form. So we can generate a form using form with, again, this time we'll set a URL because we're going to submit to that post uh, route that we just created and we don't need a user here. We just need to collect an email address. So let's go into Rails routes one more time and take a look at what was generated for the password reset route. So password reset is what we want to use for our URL here. So we'll say password reset path um, and that should be a Ruby method call and we'll have our form here. So we will go and do the typical uh, thing from our registrations where we collect the email address and we have a sign up uh, button at the bottom. Or in this case, we will have the button that will say um, reset password, for example. Okay, so now we're gonna need to edit the sessions new file and underneath the password, we can have a link to forgot your password, question mark, and this will go to that same password reset path. So now if we refresh our page in our browser, we'll see forgot your password. We can click on that. It will go to the new route of password reset, render that form and we need to now create our um, create action to actually process this. So if we jump back to our password resets controller, here is where we need to handle that. So we're gonna look up the user and say user.find by email and we'll use params email to grab that because in our new for the, let me pull that up, there it is. Um, for our form with, we just have the email. We have no model, so it's going to be params email um, to grab that out of the params. Then our controller here is gonna do a couple things. So first we're gonna check if the user is present. So if we found a user, we want to send an email to them. And we'll do that in a minute, send email. And then we want to redirect to the root path with a message. So we'll say notice and we'll say um, if an account with that email was found, we have sent a link to reset your password. Something simple like that. 
Now, what happens when we don't have a user um, in our database? Well, we don't want to expose that that user um, doesn't exist in our app. Same reason on registration or uh, logins that you want to say invalid email or password because you don't want to tell people that, hey, this person does have an account with that email address. Um, we want to just keep it straightforward there uh, and, and make it generic. So in this case, we can send the redirect always to the root path and that message, whether or not the user was found in our database. So the only piece that we really need to implement here is sending an email. Now Rails has a feature called Action uh, Mailer where we can use the command line to run a Rails generate command to create a mailer. And so your mailers will be named something like user mailer and you can give it emails that you want to send in there. So for example, um, we can say forgot or maybe a password mailer and we will have a reset email that we want to send out. So let's generate that and you'll see it will create an app mailers password mailer and then a reset text.erb and a reset html.erb. And that's because emails can actually have multiple formats, text and HTML, and so that if your browser or your email client doesn't support HTML, um, it can see the text version of it and you have both of those included. And then there's a couple test files for um, testing out your emails, but we're going to set up that test email here and actually use a special tool to uh, open that email in our browser. So first things first, let's set up the email so it gets sent. So we'll say password mailer dot with user at user and we'll say um, dot reset dot deliver later. So let me break this down for you. What we're saying is go to the password mailer. We want to send the reset email, but we want to include some parameters here so we know who to send that to. So we say with, and that's going to set up params inside of the mailer, very similar to params in your controllers. So we can say params user and access that user. And then we can call deliver later to actually send this email out in a background job. And the reason we want to use a background job to send this is that sending an email can take a second. It can take a little bit of time to connect to the email server, to send the email over to that, and then to have it sent out. So we send that in a background job. So our request in the browser can happen basically immediately and we'll have that sent out um, in a background job whenever it is finished. So the browser, the user will see a response very, very quickly, but the email will take a second to send out. And then they will go to their email inbox and take a look at that email. The other option here is to deliver now, which will send the email right away, but it will make the response in your Rails app in the browser a little bit slower because it has to wait for that to actually send. So let's leave it deliver now for a minute and then let's implement the actual mailer so we can see that running and then we'll change it to work with the background job like we would use in production. So let's save this file and I will talk to you in the next video.